Curtis Fuller sadly passed away a couple of weeks ago, but he will live on forever through his music. I was fortunate enough to see him in a concert here in Stockholm, maybe 10 years ago. He was out of breath quickly, played short solos, you know, deep into the microphone. But you could still hear his technique, his uh, imagination and humor. If you have watched my videos before, you know I love to transpose phrases, move them around in the keys, because you learn so much from it. So today I have selected three phrases from Curtis Fuller, of course. The first one is from the Benny Golson album Groovin' with Golson. Curtis Fuller and Benny Golson made many records together, so many great arrangements and uh, solos. This phrase is from the song Yesterdays, and it's uh, Curtis' very first phrase in the solo. Such a beautiful phrase. And when I try to imitate uh, Curtis, I'm thinking about the articulation. Even though his tone is so, you know, big and warm, the articulation is very clear and uh, sometimes sharp. And also the eight notes, even in this kind of slow tempo, it has kind of a bouncy shuffle feel to it. So this is a nice phrase to use in a, a minor situation. The first note is the lead tone. Do you say lead tone in English? One half step below the root of the minor chord. <laughs> And then we just continue up the minor scale, D minor in this case. And then circle back to the minor third. And there we make a slide movement. And then we have this nice minor third, five up to nine. With a triplet on the five note. A very nice common cell in uh, the jazz vocabulary. So if we imagine we are playing a 2-5 to a C major chord, I'm sure you recognize. And Curtis's phrase is kind of a variation of that. Even though we are not going to C major, we are staying in the key of uh, D minor. And something else I try to focus on when you go lower down in the register, is to keep this warm, big tone, even though it's a little bit, you know, windy and jazzy, which Curtis is an expert of. Okay, so let's transpose it to uh, C minor. Then we start half note down from C. I prefer to play F on the 4th position, because it's uh, less slide movement and you want to slide up from D on the 4th position, up to the E flat anyway. Let's try B flat minor next. Ah, it's a really nice phrase. Okay, for phrase number 2. Let's play something faster. I have picked one from John Coltrane's Blue Train record, where I guess most people hear Curtis Fuller the first time. And this phrase is from Moments Notice. It's on his third chorus, I think. And in the ninth bar, you have two two fives leading to A flat major. He kind of ignores the chords there and just play E flat dominant seven. And Curtis does that throughout the tune, kind of skips over or ignores some chords. But since his melodic lines are so strong, it sounds great anyway. Okay, so the phrase sounds like this. And here again I try to keep that bouncy shuffle feel. Usually the faster you play, the more straight the eighth notes become. 
but Curtis can play very fast and still keep that bouncy feeling. I don't know how he does it. So when thinking on transposing this phrase, you start on the third of the dominant seven chord, go down to the root and then chromatic down to the flat seven. This is what you nowadays call a bebop scale. From the flat seven, an arpeggio. Here I again use an alternative position for the F, played on the sixth position. I don't know how Curtis played this phrase, but it's a nicer movement if you can get this into your muscles, instead of... You just have to get used to it. Okay then, so we have landed on the fifth note of the dominant chord. Now we will play a very common cell in the jazz vocabulary. Okay, enough. But it sounds like Curtis is adding a bit of color. He is raising the fourth note, in this case to an E natural instead. So I guess when you are transposing this phrase, you can choose if you want that note raised or not. And then we finish off with... 5, 4, 3, 1 on uh, the major chord. If we play this in B flat major, so we have an F dominant 7 to the B flat major chord. We start on the third, which in this case is an A. So here I use two alternative positions, the D and uh, the F. Especially the last phrase will flow a lot better. Instead of... If you can avoid this kind of sewing movement, do it. Maybe C major as well. G dominant 7 to C. Start on the third, so we start on the B natural. So in a way, the higher up you come, the easier it gets with, you know, all the slide movement. But Curtis wasn't afraid of going deeper into the register and still play these uh, bebop lines. The third phrase is from a Sonny Clark album, Sonny's Crib. It's a sextet album, a very similar sound to Blue Train. This phrase is from Speak Low, Curtis's uh, second phrase, I think, in his solo. And here we have the opportunity to practice some triplets and uh, a turn. So it sounds like this. So we start with the chromatic triplet up to the root. So we start a minor third down. And this is perfect in F major. When we are transposing this phrase, it gets a little trickier, but from the fourth position up to the first is perfect. And then we play one, two, three, five, seven, six, five. A nice line there, and then comes the turn. The notes without the turn are... And with the turn... So what I do is just add a note, one partial above the C in this case. Some people articulate the partial above as well, and some don't. So you can try both, see what you like best. So this is without... And with... And now in the song we switch to D dominant 7, or A minor if you want, with the flat 5 first, and then uh, D dominant 7. Curtis goes directly into the D7 though, and then we get this um, diminished chord. Super common in jazz as well. I bet you've heard uh, this one a hundred times. And that is what Curtis is playing here as well, with a slight variation. So the last two notes are the 1 and the 5 of the dominant chord, but it almost sounds like you have already moved to a G minor chord, so you can use that line that way as well. Except for the other things I focus on when I try to imitate Curtis, here we have a nice vibrato inflection. If I play the last part of 
the phrase, first without the inflection and then with it, you can uh, compare. It adds a bit of nice life and uh, swing to the phrase, I think. So let's transpose it to G major, maybe. So a minor third down from G, we have E. That triplet is obviously a little more cumbersome than in uh, F major. And then we have to plan ahead. So we are far out in the positions when we arrive at the turn. If we play the phrase without alternative positions and we end up on a D on the first position, the turn will be hard to perform nicely. <laughs> It's possible, but it's a lot harder, I think. So if you plan ahead, you play the D on the fourth position, the turn will be easier to play. Let's try A flat major as a last exercise. Now we can play the triplet on the same uh, partial from the sixth position, so that's nice. That felt a little bit easier. That's the exciting thing about different keys. You learn so much about the instrument. So I hope this was useful. If you have a special Curtis Fuller story or experience, share it in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. I prefer to play F on the fourth. I prefer, I pre prefer. The third phrase is from a Sunday. The